Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah, in the last class, we have discussed about the module two, the module three, completely about the interest and interest factors and all. So, next module four is discuss about the uh, decision making, how the a manager can take a decision on his alternatives, on his alternatives on any particular problem. So here, if you look at the syllabus, uh, the present uh, module four consists of present worth of uh, uh, returns and future worth of returns and annual worth as well as the rate of returns. So first, uh, these are the four Im important methods which you can have uh, in order to take the decision. They can use any of these four methods. And basic present worth comparisons, present worth equivalence and assets with unequal lives and infinite lives, future worth comparisons. Uh, payback comparisons, equivalent annual worth comparisons, situations for annual worth comparisons, all this, uh, see, it's basically there are three methods, I mean four methods, all these four methods are uh, distributed in this module four with the different concepts, right? So present worth, future worth, and annual worth, and rate of returns. So we are discussing on the other, on the other things, some of the things are, uh, which is covered in this is uh, product costing and cost of capital. So if you look at this, as we told that the uh, main thing is in the engineering economics, we are going for any uh, capital investment or if you have a say for example a replacement of machines or buying a new equipment or say for example you start the investing on some other uh, projects. So project in, these are all uh, different uh, problems which the any manager can uh, face. So in, in order to have the which proposal is going to be give the best returns or which proposal will give the returns to me or savings to me. So all this to uh, all this to be known through our decision making process. So this uh, capital invest, uh, uh, that the pattern of capital investment and revenue or savings cash flows or cost cash flows, whatever it is, uh, it will be different for every uh, projects. So we cannot, uh, we cannot have, you know, uh, how to choose, um, how to analyze the various alternatives, which has the different cash flows and based on that, how you can uh, choose the best one, choose the best one. So uh, there is no single method to do that. Uh, so we have a different methods. We have a different methods among those, uh, as we told that the present worth comparison and uh, annual worth comparison, or, uh, future worth comparison. And also we have a of return methods. So this engineering economics decisions, uh, whichever you take the decisions on these uh, investments, um, it, it can be executed, executed on the you know, present worth of all the incomes and expenditures associated with those uh, decisions, regardless of when those activities occur. You know, and uh, there are, as we told that, uh, uh, different methods, different methods which are, which are, I, I'll just write down the methods which you can use for uh, decision making process. In this, is there are five methods. One is Present worth, present worth method of comparison. Present worth method of comparison. Okay, you can say it was just present worth. Then we have a future worth. Then we have annual worth. Equal, of course, equal equivalent annual worth. You can say equivalent annual worth. Equivalent present worth, equivalent uh, future worth, equivalent annual worth, and finally the uh, based on the rate of returns, uh, rate of returns we have internal rate of return, internal rate of return. There are two methods on the rate of returns, okay, and external rate of return, external rate of return. So this complete module covers these five methods. Of course, external rate of return will be in short form ERR, and this is in short form we can call it as IRR. So uh, this complete module, uh, we have the problems on these four uh, uh, basic methods, that is internal rate of return. So uh, we'll cover all these problems. We'll cover all these problems. So the first three methods, which is no, these three, the first three methods, this is another two methods which you can say, but we'll be using only internal rate of return. And these first three methods, which converts all the cash flows, because 
uh, present work method, uh, future work, whatever you method you take, the cash flows which we talked about, the cash flows is cash inflows and as well as cash, uh, cash inflows and cash outflows. So if, you, if you, for any investment we have, we'll be having these kind of cash inflows and cash outflows. So together we get called as cash flows. So all these cash flows convert into equivalent present work. Equivalent present work. So what is the present worth of this uh, cash flow and what is the present worth of this cash flow? And we will be calculating for each and every cash flow here. If we have a different cash inflows and cash outflows. Okay, so uh, based on that, we are going to, uh, in similarly for the future work and for the uh, annual work also we'll be doing in the same fashion, in the same fashion. Now we'll discuss uh, first with the present work method of comparison, present work method of comparison. So in the present work method of comparison, so here if you look at in this cash flows, in this method of comparison, the cash flows, as we told that cash flows is nothing but cash inflows or cash outflows. Cash inflows or cash outflows of each alternative will be reduced to time zero by using by assuming an interest rate i. It means that it is reduced to time zero means we are going to calculate for the each cash flow for the each cash flow the present worth. Time reduced to time zero means for each cash flows we are going to calculate the present worth in this present worth comparison in this present worth comparison. So then depending on the type of the decision, the best alternative will be selected by comparing the present worth amounts of alternatives. So we'll be, we'll be having, say, for example, there are two alternatives. So alternative one and alternative two. So uh, which is the best? How we are going to choose the best? So we need to calculate the present worth for the alternative one. And we need to calculate the uh, present worth for the alternative two. And based on the uh, requirement, so if it is a cost uh, regarding the cost, you are looking at the cost. So we'll be looking at the minimum, which is shows the minimum present worth that will be chosen as a uh, best alternative. Similarly, if you are looking at the revenue, if you are looking at the revenue, then which gives the maximum present worth uh, that will be taken as a your best alternative. So based on the, depending on the type of the decision that is for maximizing the profit or minimizing the cost. So the best alternative will be selected by comparing the present worth of the different alternatives. So that is what the present worth comparison. So here, for all the cash flows which are represented in the uh, any alternative, for each cash flow, we are going to calculate the present worth amount. Present worth amount. So the sign, see, uh, uh, the sign of various amounts at a different points in time in a cash flow diagram is to be decided based on the type of the decision problem. So that sign also very. Say if you take the, um, uh, if it is a cost dominated, then the, all the cost will be taken as positive. If it is a revenue dominated means if there are only maximum is cash inflows you have. If you have a maximum cash inflows you have that uh, that will be taken as uh, uh, revenue will be taken as uh, positive. And if the maximum cash outflows are there then the cost will be taken as negative. So that's what is uh, talks about in the second I mean third and fourth point. So in a cost dominated cash flow diagram in a cost dominated uh, cash flow diagram the cost will be assigned with the positive sign. See so the cost dominated cash flow diagram in the sense, I'll just uh, show you uh, what is meant by cost dominated uh, cash flow diagram. So cash dominated in, cost dominated in the sense, which has only the cash, uh, I mean uh, inflows, sorry, outflows. Ca cost dominated is, which have only the cash outflows. That is what you can call as cost dominated cash flow diagram. So for example, this is a cash flow at one, uh, I mean, at uh, say 1000. Okay, say so this is also one more cash flow, you have 5000. And one more cash flow, say for example, 500. So one more uh, cash outflow is say for example, 4000. So different cash flows at different time periods. Okay, so this is what, and you have only say for example, uh, one uh, cash inflow. So this here, if you compare to this, it has a a cost dominated means mo most of the uh, cash flows are here cash outflows cash outflows so that's why this is called cost dominated cash flow diagram so in this cost dominated cash flow diagrams this is called cost and this is called cost because it is cash outflow cash outflow and this is called revenue say for example 10000 so this is a revenue because it is a cash inflow so this will be taken as positive this will be taken as positive while doing the while doing the calculation uh, uh, we have to take this cash 
outflows as positive and cash inflow as negative because this is a cost dominated cash flow diagram so that's what he talks in the fourth point now if you look at uh, this uh, fourth point the revenue and uh, yeah and the third point the cost dominated cash flow diagram the cost that is outflows cash outflows all will be assigned with the positive sign and the profit or a revenue or a salvage value which are called as cash inflows which are called as cash inflows will be assigned with the negative sign that's what we discussed just now similarly similarly in a revenue dominated or profit dominated cash flow diagram in the sense all the cash flows are cash outflows i mean sorry cash inflows cash inflows so in the revenue profit dominated cash flow diagram the profit or a revenue or a salvage value which are called as inflows cash inflows to an organization will be assigned with positive sign the cash which are cash outflows uh, will be assigned with the negative sign so this is a very important thing which you need to understand what is meant by cost dominated cash flow diagram what is meant by revenue dominated cash flow diagram so how it looks like is like this say for example one more cash flow diagram if i have drawn say at the end of first year i have say 2000 then one more i have say for example 5000 and then at the end of third year i'll be having so 1000 okay at the end of fourth year i'll be having once again 5000 so these are the different cash flows and at the end of fifth year i have say for example some amount of uh, cash outflow say 1000 so here if you look at the most is dominated is a revenue dominated cash flow diagram so the most is revenue dominated cash flow diagram so the in this case all the revenues will be taken as positive all the revenues will be taken as cost uh, positive while calculating the present worth of the Uh, any alternative while well, calculating the present worth of any alternative will be taking the revenues all revenues are positive sign so and uh, whichever the cash outflow is there cash outflow is there then that will be taken as negative sign that will be taken as negative sign so this is for revenue dominated revenue dominated cash flow diagram that's what it says so all the cash inflows all the cash inflows this is called cash inflows and this is called cash outflow cash outflows so all the ca cash inflows will be treated as positive and the, all the cash outflows that is cost all this will be come under the uh, negative sign you need to represent with the negative sign so that is the fourth point in this present worth comparison so in this method of comparison there is a revenue dominated cash flow diagram the profit revenue salvage value all will be uh, shown as positive sign because it is a revenue dominated and the cash outflows the cash outflows that is cost that is cost will be assigned with negative sign it may be a maintenance cost or operating cost whatever it is the cost will be treated as negative sign in this case so as uh, yeah yeah we have discussed this revenue dominated cash flow diagram see if you look at this revenue dominated cash flow diagram so r1 r2 r3 and so on we have uh, different alternatives then revenues are there a generalized revenue dominated cash flow diagram is represented in this and we have the p value and we have the s yes also so p represents the present worth i mean uh, an initial investment which has been made which has been made for a particular alternative which has been made for a particular alternative and r1 r2 r3 and so on we call as the revenues a uh, particular year say r1 is revenue at first year and revenue at second year and revenue at third year and so on so we have the revenues for till nth year till nth year and also we have a yes is the salvage value yes is the salvage value so after usage of the life of a particular alternative or a machine or equipment whatever it is after certain uh, usage of the service life it has some value it has some value that value is called as salvage value that value is called as salvage value so the salvage value is a return the salvage value is a return here 
so this completely uh, only in the beginning the present worth i mean present amount which is invested at the time zero that is a uh, only amount which is a cash outflow and the remaining you have a many revenues so that is why it is called revenue dominated cash flow diagram revenue dominated cash flow diagram so in this case present worth present worth will be calculated by using say for example uh, we'll take we have the equation for calculating the present worth for a given amount future amount yeah see first we'll talk about the uh, revenue dominated uh, cash flow diagrams in this in this he has mentioned so at the time zero you have a initial investment at time zero you have a initial investment and at the end of every year at the end of every year you have the revenues you have revenues okay and even i have a salvage value and say this is revenue r1 and say r2 and say r3 and so on say this is rn this is say rn so nth period so in this case i want to calculate the present worth of this alternative so present worth of this alternative where i is equal to some percentage you have of course i is equal to some i percent okay so in this case the present worth the present worth as we told that present worth will be calculated so all the, it is because it is a revenue dominated cash flow diagram the cost the cost will be taken as negative the cost will be taken as negative and the remaining will be taken as positive so here if you look at this uh, p, p, p is the present value so that present value will be treated as minus p then plus for this cash flow diagram so for this cash flow diagram that is what is the uh, present worth value what is the present worth value for this r1 for this r1 at time zero we are calculating for this cash flow i mean r1 uh, what is the um, what is the amount at this particular point and time zero at the time zero so that is nothing but i will have to calculate the p is equal to uh, p is equal to that equation which i have present worth amount p is equal to uh, f into 1 plus uh, 1 by uh, 1 plus i all to the power of n that's what uh, is mentioned in this uh, yeah so if you look at see here 1 by 1 plus i whole to the power of n 1 by 1 plus i whole to the power of n means i have the equation i have the equation we know that equation f is equal to f is equal to p into 1 plus i whole to the power of n means if i have a, a amount say for example if i invested a p amount and what is the future amount i am going to get so for that we have equation f is equal to p into 1 plus i whole to the power of n similarly p is equal to we are going to calculate the p value here p is equal to f by 1 plus i whole to the power of n 1 plus i whole to the power of n so based on this equation based on this equation we can write for r1 so here r1 r2 are nothing but we can say f1 f2 f3 and all because it is a future amount at the end of first year means it is a future amount at the end of second year is uh, nothing but it is a future amount at the end of third year r3 will become the future amount So, so if this is a future amount, we need to calculate the present amount. So, uh, we have the equation for calculating this R1 into 1 by 1 plus i whole to the power of n is equal to here 1. n is equal to here is 1. Similarly, plus R2 into 1 by 1 plus i whole to whole square, and say for R3, R3 into 1 by 1 plus i. Whole cube, and so on, and so on. I can write plus R n into one by one plus i whole to the power of n, and also we have the salvage value s into one by one plus i whole to the power of n. So these things, if you look at this one, so only this, only one cash outflow is there. For that, I have written with a negative sign. and this is a cash inflow and it is a future amount and i for this cash flow i am calculating the what is the present amount so this is all a present worth these are all present worth values so these are all present worth values so present worth values of each cash flow 
present work value of each cash flow for we are calculating individually and then we are adding all these cash flows we are adding all these cash flows so that is how we are going to calculate the present work amount and also we can have the factors also we can use the factors if you are uh, here you can use the factors like say for example minus p i can use the factors minus p plus c what we are finding here uh, p you are finding for the given r1 so p by means here nothing but p by f i am using i am finding the p for the given f comma i at the rate of percent and 1 and then r2 into p by f comma i comma 2 and r3 into p by f comma i comma 3 and so on i can write plus rn p by f comma i comma n plus s p by f comma i comma n so this is the by using the factors and i can use this uh, equations also if you want to find out so you can use any of this you can use any of this present what p w for the given rate of i percent this is how we can calculate the for a particular alternative one so this is a say alternative one similarly alternative two cash flow diagram will be known and from the alternative two cash flow diagram you need to calculate the present what you need to calculate the present what by using this equation and then compare the present worth of the alternative one and present worth of the alternative two so that we can come out with the best alternative based on the decision on which we have to make it is a profit or a profit or it is a cost so on which decision you want to take if it is a cost then minimum minimum which gives the minimum present worth that will be taken as best alternative if it is a profit oriented uh, alternatives which you have chosen that is you are looking at the maximizing the profit then the best alternative will become the maximum present worth which will gives that will be taken as a best alternative so now so this is how you can calculate the present worth of this particular uh, revenue dominated cash flow diagram revenue dominated cash flow diagram so here uh, in this formula expenditures will be taken as negative that's what we have taken as p is the expenditure at the time zero we have invested so that will be taken as negative and the remaining will be taken as positive and also if you have some more alternatives which are to be compared with this alternative then the corresponding present worth amounts are to be computed and compared so finally the alternative with the maximum present worth amount should be selected as the best alternative if it is a profit oriented if it is a profit oriented so maximum present worth which gives the which alternative gives the maximum present worth that will be taken as a best alternative right so next coming to the cost dominated cash flow diagram so uh, in this cash uh, cost dominated cash flow diagram so if you look at the cash flow diagram maximum see at the invest initial investment p is also a, a, a cost and the c1 is a uh, uh, say uh, i mean uh, some of the cost uh, for example operating cost or maintenance cost a uh, failure i mean mission uh, uh, service cost whatever it is all the costs are mentioned here and also at the end of nth year we have a salvage value so salvage value here it is a cash inflow it is a cash inflow so only one case salvage value means at the end of the service life of the machine what is the amount we are going to get for the particular machine that is nothing but the salvage value so that's what nothing but the salvage value. so at the end of nth year we have the salvage value is yes so that is the cash inflow for this cash dominated cash flow diagram but remaining all will be the cash outflows which are we can say expenditures so in this cash flow diagrams all the expenditures will be taken as positive because it is a cost dominated so all the expenditures will be taken as a positive and the uh, revenues or a profit will be taken as positive i mean uh, negative negative okay so p represents an initial investment and the remaining c1 c2 c3 are called as the cost of either it is operation or maintenance cost whatever it is so that will be represented as a cost uh, cash flows or cash outflows we can say and s is the salvage value at the end of the nth year so in order to calculate the present worth of the amount see the same equation can be used same equation can be used so here we'll uh, discuss by using this uh, cash flow diagram so here i'll mention 
the cash, uh, this is a cost dominated, right? Cost dominated in the sense. So we have the initial investment P, we have the initial investment P at the end of first year, say for example, I have some amount of cost is involved and uh, for operation or for a maintenance cost, whatever it is, and say C2 and say C3 and so on. Uh, we have different cash outflows we have, different cash outflows here. One, there is only one uh, cash inflow that is called salvage as well, that is called salvage. So this is called cost dominated, cost dominated cash flow diagram. This is called as cost dominated cash flow diagram. So in this case, uh, as we told that all the costs, all the costs means cash outflows, nothing but cash outflows will be taken as positive, will be taken as positive. And the revenues will be taken as, that is cash inflows, cash inflows will be taken as negative. So if I calculate the present worth for this, present worth for the rate of 5%, for the rate of 5%, so here the cost P plus C1 into the same formula which we can uh, calculate the uh, uh, future what uh, I mean present what for this future amount that is C1 into 1 by 1 plus i whole to the power of 1 then C2 into C2 into 1 by 1 plus i whole square this is from by using formula okay this is by using formula C3 into 1 plus i whole to the power of uh, 3 and so on plus because nth, nth cost is there, so for nth cost, that is 1 plus i whole to the power of n. And by looking at the yes, yes will become negative here. This is very important here. Yes will become negative here. So yes into 1 by 1 plus i whole to the power of n. So the same can be used by using the factors, by using the factors i percent is equal to p plus C1 into that is we are going to calculate the present what amount for the F. So here F is nothing but uh, the C1 only that is future amount only for I rate of interest for the first year. Then C2 into P by F I comma 2. Then C3 into P by F I comma 3 and so on. Cn into uh, P by F I comma n then minus minus s into p by f comma i comma n so this is a generalized formula this is using the factors and this is using the equation this is the using factors and this is using the equation so these factors which can be obtained from the table and this can be just substitution and uh, find out the present word for the uh, cost dominated cash flow diagrams so as we told that this is cost dominated, we'll be looking at the minimizing this cost. So any organization, when it is a cost, pay, a cost dominated cash flow diagram are there. So the alternatives which gives the uh, minimum cost, minimum cost that will be taken as best alternative. So here the present worth of the alternative one and the present worth of say alternative two will be compared, will be compared after computation of the present worth of the different alternatives. Then we look at the which gives the minimum present worth, the minimum of present worth one and minimum of present worth two. So after calculating the present worth one and present worth two, what is the minimum among these two alternatives that will be chosen as the best alternative. So this minimum will be taken as best alternative. So in the case of cost dominated cash flow diagram. So if you look at here, yeah. So P represents, I mean, uh, the P represents the initial investment. That's all we discussed. And then the formula also we have discussed that C1 into 1 by 1 plus i whole to the power of n, C2 into 1 by 1 plus i whole square, and plus Cj, and uh, and so on. Okay. So here the negative. So minus S into, minus S into, we have written minus S into 1 by 1 plus i whole to the power of n. So in this formula, expenditures are assigned with the positive sign as we discussed and the uh, revenue shall be taken as negative sign that is the salvage value is the revenue while calculating the salvage value present what we have taken the negative sign we have taken the negative sign and if you have any more than more uh, alternatives which are to be compared with this alternative then the corresponding present worth amounts the corresponding present worth amounts are to be computed that's what present worth amount one that is for alternative one present worth amount two that is for alternative two are computed 
and compared so then we need to find the minimum of these two that is minimum of present worth 1 and minimum of present worth 2 which gives the minimum present worth that will be selected as the best alternative that will be selected as the best alternative so this is how the uh, uh, present worth value of different alternatives various alternatives which are available and based on that the manager can take a decision if it is a profit oriented or if it is a cost oriented so which gives the maximum profit that alternative will be chosen which gives the minimum cost if it is a cost uh, oriented uh, which will gives the minimum cost that will be taken as a best alternative so that is how the decision making is taken place uh, by using by using the engineering economic analysis engineering economic analysis by using present worth comparison by using present worth comparison so here as we told that the decision making and alternatives the decision making and alternatives how you can take the decision making and alternatives so in case the decision is to select the alternative with the minimum cost then the alternative with the least present worth or minimum present worth amount will be selected that's what we discussed on the other hand if the decision is to select the alternative with the maximum profit then the alternative with the maximum present worth will be selected the maximum present worth will be selected so if you look at this uh, uh, cash flow diagrams which are conditions for present worth comparison we'll discuss so this is about a little uh, explanation about the present worth uh, comparison now we look at the conditions we look at the conditions for present worth comparison so conditions present worth comparison so what are the conditions for present worth comparison so here if you look at uh, so you should know the cash flows should be known for any alternative the cash flows should be known or known generally we can know the uh, we can calculate or we can estimate the present worth we can estimate the present worth okay right uh, second one cash flows are in constant values means whatever the cash flows it should not be arbit i mean uh, variable it should be constant cash flows are constant value it should have the constant value and third one it we are going to calculate the present worth that has to be known the interest rate should be known the interest rate should be known and fourth one comparison made of course we are not uh, including the uh, tax comparisons are made we are not including the tax values right comparisons are made before the tax i mean with the uh, before tax cash flows with the before tax means the tax is not implemented before tax cash flows okay so and uh, fifth one of course uh, which will not uh, include the intangible uh, uh, intangible considerations comparisons do not include comparisons do not include intangible do not include intangible considerations do not include intangible considerations means intangibles are nothing but which are difficult to quantify uh, factors that is uh, say for example impression created by design is an intangible impression created by design means they, uh, it is a uh, uh, which is a factor intangible factor which cannot be evaluated which cannot be evaluated and also it would not be included in a present worth comparison uh, in a present worth comparisons so comparisons do not include the intangible intangible conditions and also comparisons are made with before tax cash flows with before tax because we are not implementing the tax also say for example cost or expenditure the tax also will be there in the uh, that particular uh, expenditure so that cash that uh, cash we are not taking into consideration so that's why it is before tax cash flows before tax cash flows and these three of course the interest rate is known and uh, what to call the cash flows are constant value and cash flows are known to be us and final uh, last point uh, these 
the comparisons do not include the comparisons do not include comparisons do not include considerations do not include considerations of the availability of funds availability of funds okay so to implement alternatives so if you have a uh, availability of funds with uh, to implement the alternatives based on that we, need, we should not take the comparison so the well see even the alternative one you have a, a fund to implement but still you should not consider that availability of funds as the uh, as the uh, implementation I mean part so you should not look into the part of the funds which are available to implement your alternative say for example alternative one uh, will include say for example which is five crores and alternative two which is say for example three crores so by looking at we have a alternative one for five crores we have the funds of five crores so that i can choose this alternative one uh, without comparing this so that that will not give a good result why because uh, we need to first look at the which alternative gives the better uh, alternative I means say for example if it is you are looking at the cost if you are looking at the cost so which alternative will give the minimum present what that will be chosen not based on the availability of funds in the organization just not based, just based on the availability of the funds in the organization so you need to go by engineering economic economic analysis by using the present what comparison then only you can uh, choose the best alternative so comparison do not include the considerations of the availability of funds to implement the alternative to implement the alternative so that is the uh, six conditions for present work comparisons so six conditions for present work comparisons okay right uh, this present work comparisons what we are now uh, discussing here we are calculating the for each cash flow what is the present work at time zero what is the present work at time zero so now we'll go with uh, 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 the method, I mean, uh, procedure, we can say general procedure, we can say general procedure, uh, general procedure, how we can uh, solve by using the uh, present word comparison. So general procedure, I'll give step by step. So first we need to draw, list the given data, list the given data. Given data is very important. Then second one, draw cash flow diagram based on the data draw cash flow diagram okay indicating the of course cash flow diagram you know how it can be drawn indicating all the cash inflows and cash outflows it may be a um, i mean a cost or it may be a revenues so all should be mentioned in the cash flow diagram next next third one is calculate calculate the present worth present worth of all of all cash flows of all cash flows uh, calculate the present worth of uh, all cash flows individually all cash flows individually individually okay that's what we did uh, the for each cash flow we have written a formula and then we have added right so that is a calculate present worth of all cash flows individually then add of course we have done in the single step these three these two combiningly these two combiningly so add the present worth of all cash flows of all cash flows so that's what we have done in a single step we have done these three and four combiningly we have done in a single steps so add the present worth of all cash flows then fifth one so we need to find out the uh, by giving, say for example, you can use the net present worth value also. You can use the net present worth. Net present worth is also you can use. That is, net present worth is if I have a single present, I mean single uh, uh, alternative, then we can use this net present worth value. If you have a, I mean two alternatives or more than two alternatives, then we can say we can use the comparison of present worth so if you have a single alternative then we can go for net present worth if you have a single alternative we can go for if you have a single alternative we can go for net present worth net present worth whether it gives so present worth of all cash 
inflows minus present worth of all outflows all cash outflows so this will gives the net present worth so the alternative next last step is the alternative is which has the highest highest present worth in the case of maximizing profit and least present worth in the case of minimizing cost will be selected will be selected so this is the different steps which you are going to use and also we know that the present worth can be calculated using the formulas or you can use the interest tables also you can use the interest tables also so any anything can be used either you can use the interest tables or you can use the formula to calculate the to calculate the present worth equation present worth equation so that is how we can calculate the net present worth that is net present worth is nothing but we have a single alternative and we are looking at which is the best alternative then we can go for that one so now uh, this is the procedure of any uh, any uh, alternative if you have for each alternative we are going to do in the similar fashion list the given data draw the cash flow diagram calculate the present worth of all cash flows individually and add the present worth of all cash flows or the present worth of all cash flows then we need to calculate the if it is a single alternative then we can calculate the net present worth so present worth minus present uh, of all cash flows minus present worth of all cash outflows then finally highest uh, present worth will be chosen in the case of maximizing the profit and least present worth will be chosen in the case of minimizing the cost in case of minimizing the cost so and finally it will be selected based on the uh decision which has to be made present worth or uh, what you can say uh, uh, i mean ma maximizing profit or minimizing the cost maximizing the profit or minimizing the cost so for example we have a, a different service life of course uh, mm, we can take one example here which you can cal calculate the present worth of uh, two alternatives a newly developed uh, we'll take one example okay right one example and i uh, will close this so that you can understand what is the present worth comparison right so i have uh, two options one is say for example a newly developed electrical car electric car newly developed electric car so i have a electric car to buy okay will cost will cost say for example will cost say for example rupees uh as i don't uh, recent uh, current uh, cost we can uh, i'll i'm taking very you know not uh, real data i'm just taking a for calculation purpose i'm taking a some values okay so rupees 21000 say for example electric car is rupees 20000 21000 to purchase it's not realistic data okay so for calculation i have taken then operating of this car operating and maintenance of this car cost include okay estimated to be uh, maintenance cost estimated to be estimated to be say rupees 350 rupees say for example okay rupees 350 and of course uh, uh, and the uh, first year with the annual increase uh, there after 50 rupees per year of course i have a uh, maintenance cost with annual increase of with annual increase of 50 rupees per year rupees 50 per year it means that we can uh, get to know what is mentioning here okay next is salvage value means the useful i mean after useful life of this car after 5 years it has the Uh, it has the uh, salvage value means that can be uh, we after selling this we can get the amount of so and so right that is what you can call as salvage value after 5 years salvage value after 5 years it is estimated is estimated as 
say rupees six thousand five hundred. So at the end of five years, if I sell this car, I'll be getting six thousand five hundred. That is the salvage value. Next, a new gas station, a new gasoline. Uh, so you can say gasoline run. Uh, a new gasoline uh, runs about. Gasoline run about say cost of uh, uh, we can say thirty. I mean uh, will cost around rupees six thousand. Uh, cost rupees sixteen thousand. Okay, this is the another one which you can uh, uh, use. That is the uh, if I go if I go with the gasoline if I go with gasoline which run about cost of sixteen thousand sixteen thousand. Okay, and the mileage is going to be thirty miles per gallon. mileage is given as 30 miles per gallon okay and the gasoline cost gasoline cost so even the gasoline cost is also i am not giving the actual data okay gasoline cost rupees 1.26 per gallon it is not actual data i am telling so just for calculation i am taking here 1.26 per gallon is expected is expected to increase of course the rates are uh, not constant so it is expected to increase increase at a rate say rupees 0.05 per year per year per liter means rupees per liter per year okay per liter per year per liter per year this is per liter Per year, not total. Okay. Next, uh, we'll have the. Uh, this is about the uh, what you call the cost, which is for uh, if I use a gal. I mean, if I use the uh, car uh, which is running with the petrol, which is the car which is running with the electric. Okay. So that is about sixteen thousand. And uh, now we'll go for uh, maintenance and operating cost, operating and maintenance cost, maintenance cost, which is around you know. Uh, rupees three hundred, rupees three hundred for this case. For this case, and also we have salvage value is estimated for this salvage value estimated at the end of five years. Estimated at the end of at the end of five years is rupees. One thousand five hundred. One thousand five hundred. Now, if the vehicles uh, are expected to driven for twenty thousand miles per year, so I have two vehicles. One is electric, and then one is a run by gasoline. Okay. So if it is, if it is expected to driven, expected to driven twenty thousand miles, twenty thousand miles. Per year, miles per year. Determine which option will be best for me. Determine which option uh, is best for me, assuming that ten uh, percent rate of and as in interest. Assuming ten percent rate of interest, we need to find which one is going to be best. Which one is going to be best? So if you look at this problem, if you look at this problem, he has mentioned two alternatives. One is Going for electric car and going for a petrol. Okay, so in this, uh, uh, which car I have to choose? And he has mentioned what is the cost of uh, initial cost of the electric car and initial cost of the uh, gasoline car, and uh, what is the operation cost for the each uh, case? Okay, in each case, we need to find out what is the operating cost, and uh, it will be operating and maintenance cost is increasing. Fifty, uh, I mean. Um, What you call fifty five fifty rupees per year, fifty rupees per year, and in the second case, there is increasing in the zero point zero five per uh, liter per liter per liter. So the gallons uh, we need to convert into these liters and then find out what is the increase in the pet, increase in the petrol value. So if you look at the operating and maintenance cost is eight hundred and forty rupees. Uh, sorry, operation cost is three hundred rupees. So then we need to find out the cost of gallon per year because twenty thousand miles we are it is going to be run 
and the mileage of uh, this uh, car is going to be uh, 30 miles per gallon 30 miles per gallon so 16000 uh, 20000 uh, divided by 30 will give the uh, how many uh, gasoline petrol i mean you are going to use in this case so that will be around 667 then uh, per liter uh, per gallon it is going to be 1.26 so each cost of the petrol is going to be how much is going to be uh, per year we need to calculate after calculating the per year then there is a increase in the 0.05 rupees per liter per year per liter per year so that we need to multiply with the uh, liters and then find out the how much increase in the cost so likewise see if you look at the first alternative so i'll go for first alternative which is mentioned as electric car so go with the given data so okay write down the given data it is electric car given data for electric car so this is the alternative one is electric car electric car so this is alternative one so this is alternative one so for this what is the data is given so as mentioned that the cost that is the uh, initial cost that is say initial cost or we can say present in expenditure initial expenditure is going to be 21000 as mentioned and also as mentioned that operating cost is 350 rupees right operating cost is operating cost is 350 rupees per year and there is a increase in every year that is what we can say it is gradient gradient is mentioned rupees 50 rupees 50 and the salvage value of this vehicle is also given salvage value is also given how much it is rupees uh, 6500 right so this is the data is given and we need to calculate the present worth we need to calculate the and also rate of interest is 10% rate of interest is 10% so this is the data is given this is the data given so after getting this data based on the data we need to draw the cash flow diagram for this so if i draw the cash flow diagram here right say this is at the end of first year this is at the end of second year and there are five years only so i can write five as it is without break up so i'll write five years so at the end of i mean initially how much investment made is that is rupees 21000 rupees 21000 is the investment made at the beginning and at the end of first year you will be having the operating cost of rupees 350 and thereafter it is goes with 50 rupees increasing that 400 then it will be how much it will be 450 then then 500 then 550 550 these are the operating cost at the end of every year at the end of every year and uh, we have the salvage value of around amount of 6000 6500 so take down this salvage value at the end of uh, fifth year this is the revenue right this is the revenue which will be taken as say uh, 6500 so now so this is what we have uh, drawn based on the data cash flow data. so now for each cash flow for each cash flow we need to find out the present worth so how to calculate the present worth so we have the equation we have the equation so present worth present worth that is p w for the rate for the rate i is equal to 10% first which cash flows the initial amount so because it is a cost dominated because cost dominated cash flow diagram in this we will be taking the cost are positive and the uh, revenues are revenues are negative revenues are negative so with i is equal to 10% i is equal to 10% so if you look at this 21000 will be having the positive sign then if you look at one more very important point here is it this this cash flows forms a uniform arithmetic gradient series this cash flows forms uniform arithmetic gradient series so for that we have uh, you can write the directly you can write the directly a by g 350 plus 15 to a by g by 15 to a by g by plus 
I can write this here directly. So plus fifty into okay, first three fifty, right? A one plus Z. We are going to calculate that uh, uh, A one plus Z and all. Three right? fifty plus fifty into A by G, comma ten percent, comma five into P by A because we are calculating the present amount. This has to be multiplied for the same value. Ten comma five. Ten comma five. So this is the for this cash flow diagrams. This cash flow diagrams I have used the uniform gradient series formula. Uniform gradient series formula. Next is salvage value. So salvage value we have to mention that it is a negative. So minus six thousand five hundred, six thousand five hundred because it is a future amount. We are going to calculate the present amount. So six thousand five hundred into Calculation of present amount for the given future amount, comma i is ten percent, comma for five years, for five years. So based on this equation, based on this equation, twenty one thousand, twenty one thousand. Then then plus so three fifty. So by looking at the factors, fifty into I can get some. Uh, Uh, factors from the table a by z comma 10 comma 5 percent 10 comma 5 percent uh, it is I think uh, one minute I'll check out the interest tables so 10 percent interest table I have to look for five years I to look for five years and the factor is a by g comma 10 comma 5 so 1.81013 1.81 1.81 1.81013 and then present what we are calculating p by a comma 10 comma n so 3.79079 3.79079 so then minus 6500 minus 6500 6500 into p by f comma 10 comma 5 So P by F for 10 comma 5 is uh, 0.62092, 0.62092. So by using this, we can calculate the present worth amount is going to be around 18,633.40. So likewise, we need to calculate for the second alternative. Second alternative. So I will stop for today. We stop for today. Okay.